Abhijit Iyer Mitra. Did I say Iyer? Iyer. 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 Iyer Mitra. Apologies. It is a pleasure to have you on my podcast. Uh, been waiting for this for a while. Uh, thanks to PG for hooking this up. First of all, considering that you just said you live in Safdarjang Enclave, as a kid who grew up reading forbidden Kushwant Singh books, right? And Kushwant Singh was the son of a man who was basically responsible for all of construction and real estate in Delhi, right? I always thought I had a strange fascination with Lutian's Delhi and those. charmed circles of power in those bungalows those colonial bungalows where you sip scotch and you make decisions for the country and there's like this this inner circle that everyone who lives there is aware about but baki sare log are just trying to get in trying to you know like uh, bribe the gatekeeper or like the pa or the politician now you live pretty close by to it has have those power circles of power changed are are they placed somewhere else or is it still new lutins jali Uh, so har har mahadev thank you for having me here um dekh bhai mere experience mein kuch bhi change nahi hua hai theek hai na ye na khaunga na khane dunga ye mera ek dost apna farm bech raha hai jo pehle teen bande aaye the uske farm kharidne ke liye tino hi government officials the right aur ek ne to ek bol raha tha ki pura 12 crore main tere ko cash mein dunga डिफेंस में ऑफिशियल है राइट right. दूसरा इनकम टैक्स में ऑफिशियल था वो बोल रहा था मैं मैं स्वॉप करूंगा तुम्हारे साथ मेरे पास तीन फ्लैट्स हैं एक मानेसर में एक इधर है एक उधर है uh, मैं आपको वो तीन प्रॉपर्टी दूंगा ये दो ये करो सो so, uh, एक तो करप्शन खत्म नहीं हुआ है नम, जब करप्शन खत्म नहीं हुआ इनफैक्ट ज्यादा हुआ है तो आपको यू शुड ऑल्सो नो कि लाटियंस में कुछ बदला नहीं है Mm. and see the thing is in a way people don't understand this what is the fundamental definition of a third world country are we speaking in english or in hindi we can speak in both okay mm. so see in america it's it, it's a state or any first world country mm. that when the government takes a decision the decision gets implemented mm. a third world country is fundamentally an enforcement deficit state by definition okay poverty everybody thinks it's about poverty it is not poverty is just one aspect of it <coughs> there are other things especially enforcement uh, a deficit to idhar kya hota hai the protection of india is that you have many cliques in delhi there is the bureaucratic clique which right. i was part of because i'm the son of two bureaucrats mm. uh uh then there is the uh, business circles the ones who live in uh, amrita shergil marg prithviraj marg and apj abdul kalam marg formerly known as aurangzeb marg to wo ek circle hai uh aur teesra ek circle hai jo political circle hai right right so in teeno mein kafi matbhed hota hai दोनों सर्कल जो बाबू का सर्कल है और जो मंत्रीगण का सर्कल है दे बेसिकली नीड द मनी फ्रॉम द इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट ठीक है द इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट नीड फेवर्स फ्रॉम दीज टू बट एवरीबडी डिपेंड्स ऑन द ब्यूरोक्रैट नाउ द प्रॉब्लम इज यू हैव टू ब्राइब एवरी सिंगल ब्यूरोक्रैट अक्रॉस द वे बिकॉज इफ यू डोंट दे विल बेसिकली स्टॉल वट एवर इट इज दैट यू हैव टू डू माइक्रो डिटेल्स राइट the power of the indian bureaucrat because they can't do anything is to stop things from happening so you know this notion that there is a latian circle that there is this inner circle where people talk it is both true and false it is true in the fact that i can abuse you on twitter all day but in the evening i will meet the same person over a scotch and it will be like yaar tune ye bol diya twitter pe yaar tune wo bol diya and la di da a lot of people i abuse on twitter are very good friends of mine <laughs> so you know i i think people don't get it also sometimes i'm also sometimes i'm genuinely abusing them but sometimes right. i'm more sarcastic and people don't get it and they're like if i call somebody pakistani anti national to pakistan lot ja they'll all be like ha 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 ye haram zada hai ye aisa agent hai tu pakistan wapas ja la di da di da and i'm sitting there going <laughs> Sometimes I will actually call up these guys and say, "Ah, you have written a very provocative article. I am going to tweet this saying, 'Look at this shameless twat.' 
uh, anti-national fellow, uh, Italian Muppet, who's uh, written this thing, uh, uh, bringing down the glory of Bharat Mata. And they'll say, yeah. uh, they'll be like, no, then it'll be a mess. So they'll be like, yes, it'll be a mess, but you'll get a lot of hits, so I'll do this for you. And it's perfectly fine, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the thing here is, um, and people don't get this, the more gali you give somebody, the more hits they get. The more yeah, it's classic they get. marketing. It is, it is. And people are so clueless about that. But, so what I'm trying to say basically is that Latians may, there is also this sort of, uh, there is this divide. I find that with the older families, hmm. you can have this relationship. Uh, the ones that have been in Delhi for a long time, I'd say pre-1991 families, uh, we understand this perfectly well. You can uh, you can genuinely attack somebody and genuinely then go and have a great scotch with them by the fireside in the evening. The post-1991, and why is 1991 important? I'll get to that. The post-1991 families, there's a huge class divide. And they don't get it. For them, it's either you're on my side, you're either with me or against me kind of attitude. Hmm. Um, so I think that is where the fracturing has happened. Right. So when you say that there are there is the old rich that was in the Lutin's Delhi circles before 1991, and then there's the new rich who made their money from what whatever economic liberalization, you know, new industries, all of those things. What happens to be the divide? And, and specifically what about these new rich? Are they the sort like, uh, take no prisoners, fuck everyone else. I don't care about, you know, like the old Delhi or aristocrats. I'm just here to make my money and have fun. So uh, see what happened in 1991 is a composite of two things. One was the Mandal Commission, uh, this thing that happened in 89. Right. And, you know, the uh, liberation of the middle and lower castes kind of thing. See, the middle castes had already been liberated. So you actually find the caste fault lines are, it is the middle castes who oppress the lower castes more, um, which we saw much earlier in Tamil Nadu, that, you know, when the Devars and people like that were sort of um, liberated, mm. they turned out to be the worst kind of caste oppressors. So uh, that is one. The second is uh, Narsimha Rao's uh, liberalization. Right. And what you've seen since 1991 till about 2010 or so is that we went from a country that was, what, 20 to 25 percent urban to mm. a country that is on paper 45% urban, but in reality about 65% urban, right? Uh, uh, because, you know, we hide these things. We say that this is an uh, urban village. Uh, where I live, there are about six, seven urban villages surrounding me. There is uh, Hoskas village, which is a very hip village. Right. There is Shapur, which has become the new Hoskas village, hip village till COVID hit. I think it's a, a Shamshan Ghat right now after post-COVID. Uh, you know, there's Yusuf Sarai and things like that, which are urban villages. Right. There are peri-urban areas. All complete rubbish. You go there, they're fully urbanized. We we live in this pretense that they are rural areas. That mm. is why you have 65% uh, urban population and this fake myth that it is actually about 55% rural still. It is not. We are a majority urban country. We are a apartheid state that gives rural areas 300 seats in parliament, 300 to 350 seats in parliament. Whereas the pr- maximum of your GDP and your population get only about 200 seats in parliament. Okay. Now this problem is your So this entire migration, rural to urban migration that happened, about 600 to 700 million people moved in those 20 years from rural to urban areas. You know, cities where where refined conversation, I'm not getting into the quality of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Uh, You'd still have the vacuous auntie who'd uh, talk like Rana Ayub and say, oh, oh, you know, sunlight falling on my balcony is actually a metaphor for the Hindu genocide against Muslims, (laughs) showing how they intend to burn us alive through the rays of the sun and blah, blah. But at least it was done in a refined way. It's the same thing who won slam poetry competitions when they were teens. (laughs) <laughs> uh-huh, exactly. I mean, it wasn't done in Rana Ayub, sort of uh, uh, low class English, uh, <laughs> terrible woman. But anyway, so uh, uh, it, you know, some refinement was there, nuance was right. there, and all of that. 
And you had these institutions in cities that were quality institutions that got swamped with the quantity intake. So neither you were at home nor at the house because your quality institutions had to then cater to quantity. So the net result was, whatever you were doing, थोड़ा सा एक्सपर्टीज हुआ किया करता था ऑल ऑफ दैट नॉट डिस्ट्रॉइड लाइक यू नो माय ग्रैंड फादर हु इन द आर्मी बोथ ऑन माय मटरनल साइड एंड माय पटरनल साइड वाज एन इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट दे बोथ वेंट टू पब्लिक स्कूल्स एंड पब्लिक कॉलेजेस एंड आई डोंट मीन दिल्ली पब्लिक स्कूल दे वेंट टू गवर्नमेंट स्कूल्स एंड गवर्नमेंट कॉलेजेस या and they got a fantastic education and th- these were the british times when you know every school every college had a extraordinary level of education uh so uh, today you go to a government school you won't even dream of going to a government school so you've had this sort of socially upwardly mobile intake into the civil services now remember when the civil services were formed they were meant to be for the elite they already knew manners they knew how to charm you, your pants off or your skirt off or whatever what depending on your sexual proclivities they managed to charm whatever off of you they managed to seduce you with your words they managed right. to seduce you with great food refinement la di da di da today you have completely ghati people joining uh, the civil services and all of that hmm coming from a third rate education okay so it's a lot of things you don't have the class you don't have the upbringing you are not taught the class or the upbringing in france you know it's a very secular kind of intake they will take you no matter if you're smart enough they will take you hmm doesn't matter tumhara family background kya hai but they will standardize your training you will learn to talk about french wine french food la di da di da i'm being frivolous in case of food you know it's so much right, more right 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 picking up social cues which are very important for a diplomat right uh, uh, i mean you can laugh about it but uh, when you actually have to extract information from somebody you'll realize why james bond is i mean james bond is a caricature but you know mm. that whole i'm going to have a 1961 bolanger and uh, sevruga caviar not beluga there's a reason to it theek hai there there is a very good reason to it yeah So here you have a compound problem. Ki your Latin circuit has been affected by yuppies who are not sophisticated, cannot express themselves with clarity, uh, have a terrible education, uh, all learned by rote. So they are not even able to macro the problems. they are not able to uh, nuance the problems they are not able to articulate um, solutions for it you have a very very potently toxic mix happening in delhi at the moment hmm but i'm sure there must be some kind of feeder schools or classes that they can take that somehow allow them to appear more sophisticated than the background they originally come from right i'm talking about uh, etiquette classes that even i took as a kid drawing it was something that my drawing teacher was running in tandem with her drawing classes and um, it's simple things like don't put your hands on the table understand these wines all of, all of those uh, shenanigans but have you seen people you know like the americans have this idea like americans like this made up idea of beauty like a normal person uh, you know made up and padded up and you know uh, makeup wagera laga ke usko banaya gaya have you seen people who've come from nothing and just you know learn the tricks of the trade learn how to speak in lutins delhi learned all of those things no i've oh. never met anyone like that you know i think we'd love to imagine these stories cinderella stories or in this case to be gender correct cinderella stories uh i've never actually seen a cinderella hmm jo jiska family background thoda sa uh, mm hai wo hamesha mm hi rehte hain they've not never been able to fit in and the problem is they then start flaunting their power uh they will pretend that they know everything uh if you don't agree with them uh government funding nahi milega tere ko hmm theek hai na you basically have to pretend you know i learned this art i refused to do it after a point of time kyunki agar mere ko koi chutiya laga main seedhe uske muh pe bol deta tha to chutiya hai 
जॉइंट सेक्रेटरी एडिशनल सेक्रेटरी वॉट एवर बट प्रॉब्लम क्या होता था कि मैं इतने घोचों के ऑफिस में गया हूं इतने मुश्किल से मैंने हंसना बंद किया है और मैं यहां बैठ के देख रहा हूं भाई तू सेक्रेटरी टू गवर्नमेंट है तेरे को पहले किस चुतिये ने पैदा किया उसके बाद किस महागांडू ने तेरी परवरिश की किस सुअर के बच्चे ने तेरे को पढ़ाया और उससे ज्यादा कौन से ये सुअर और सुअराइन और डाइन थे तेरे सिलेक्शन बोर्ड पे जिसने तेरा सिलेक्शन मैं मैं बैंचुत मैं बैठ के देख रहा हूं तो कहां से सेक्रेटरी बना भाई मेरा कुत्ता तेरे से ज्यादा लायक है सेक्रेटरी बनने के लिए आई आई समाइम्स यू नो आई इट्स स्केरी डूड इट्स रियली रियली स्केरी the caliber of intake you see is just extraordinary crap are there programs to perhaps you know change that there is not because see you have to acknowledge a problem you even have to mm. understand what the problem is now you tell me the way i have condensed it down for you mm. that there is a real class problem first of all they will not even acknowledge a class class problem uh because it's politically incorrect the second thing is they don't even know that there is a class problem hmm okay so acknowledgement ki baat dur they don't even know that this problem exists second they don't want to acknowledge ki tumhara education even though you've passed the selection board your education might have you've reproduced everything by rote where right. is the application point so see you have to first acknowledge all these problems to fix them theek hai so it's it's not going to happen what is uh, like i specialize in defense so i can keep telling you defense mein kya hota hai har bar ek naya defense procurement policy aata hai har 3 4 saal kuch naya policy aata hai right how do you fix a human problem through documentation See if you have a country like Ethiopia, not Ethiopia. Uh, well, Ethiopia is heading towards a civil war now. Somalia was also a civil war. Eritrea, uh, Ethiopia, का भी war हुआ था. Mm. Sudan में हुआ था. If fixing that problem was as easy as a constitution, all Somalia or uh, Ethiopia or Sudan needed to do was to enact a new constitution. Does that fix the problem? No. so there's this belief that somehow a new defense procurement policy can get rid of corruption it can get rid of incompetence it can't mm. uh but again how do you explain this to someone when i tell people this theek hai a few people agree with me most will turn around and say ha ganje takle mote tu tu defense secretary hai kya tere ko ye sab pata hai kya tune election jeeta hai kya tere ko sab pata hai kya tu military mein tha kya मोटे गांडू नहीं तेरे को क्या पता ओके फाइन सो द वे आई एम ट्राइंग टू पीस दिस ऑल टुगेदर इन माय हेड यू मस्ट हैव अ लॉट ऑफ फ्रेंड्स नॉट ओनली इन द मिलिट्री आई एम अज्यूमिंग ब्यूरोक्रेट्स देन थिंकर्स देन सम इंटेलेक्चुअल्स देन सम जस्ट यू नो बाबूज हु आर द पीपल यू मीट इन योर डेली लाइफ बिकॉज़ द द द जॉब दैट यू हैव राइट डिफेंस एनालिसिस is it like you you're having dinner with generals and then chilling with some sepoys i'm trying to understand because it's because there's a whole twitter you right and then there's the actual job job and then i'm assuming you also meet with people who work at the print so what sort of like social circles do you personally navigate through because all of this all of these observations make for you know great social commentary as i've just seen in in, uh, in this conversation um i meet a lot of people across a lot of spectrums the one thing i've started avoiding a lot uh is talking to bureaucrats and the military hmm why is that uh, i i'll tell you why because i realized long back that you know um the granting of access was dependent on you licking their ass and taking their line publicly Mm. Unless you portray the worst kind of asshole to be the next Einstein, you don't get access. And if you're an asshole, I'm going to call you an asshole straight to your face. 
ठीक है आई कैन डू दैट शिट एंड आई फाइंड इट्स यूजलेस डूइंग दैट शिट बिकॉज वॉट यू गेटिंग एट द एंड ऑफ द डे you're getting government funding at best you get a conference to host at best where you can you know preen and pretend to be the uh, stage queen or whatever but you're not get, getting any information you're actually compromising yourself i i believe you're compromising yourself hmm. so i can't do that kind of shit anymore right so i uh, what i do is i just keep meeting lots of people mostly at uh, ipcs where i work i mentor young people right right now even there i'd say 99% of them are not worth the time but that 1% that gets through they so totally are worth it like you know they're the bachas that are going to go places um uh, and i'm just blessed to have met some of them and been able to mentor them even for a short period of time hmm uh other than that i only meet with people who are smarter than me who can talk back to me a lot of people get intimidated by me is it because you're articulate i is it rarity i don't know maybe i'm just a shithead maybe just i'm a fighty little shithead um, or maybe I'm whatever but i'm only um i only meet people that can either give me a lot of information knowing that i'm absorbing information i'm not trying to you know uh, uh suck it up from them secretly espionage blah 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 or people much smarter than me and that's a very very rewarding experience because every day you get to learn something new it doesn't even need to be new facts but it's just new ways of contextualizing things You know. I always maintain that in the India that we're going to live in in the future, our generation, ke liye, uh, kids would have to master the chai ki tapri as much as as they have to master the cafe, right? Because mm. I see an increasing divide between, you know, the Ankur Tiwari listening, Lifafa going, concert going, auro ke andar ja ke aise chill karne wale shawl pehen ke, and and then you know like the whole like the whole family who lives in a chawl in Mumbai, unme jo divide ana shuru ho gaya na. और फिर यहाँ पे बिकॉज देर इज नो सेंट्रल मिथ दैट बाइंड जस्ट ऑल टूगेदर एज अ जनरेशन राइट तो यहाँ पे ये क्या करते हैं दे दे स्टार्ट इज पाउसिंग दीज एक्सट्रीमली लेफ्ट आइडियल्स अबाउट जस्टिस इन ऑल और हमारे म्यूजिशियंस भी फिर दे स्टार्ट से यू नो हैश टैग फलाना फलाना लाइव मैटर राइट एंड वी बेसिकली वॉट इज हैपनिंग इज दिस इंटायर फेड इज इज अ ग्रे newspaper the grey newspaper block sharing fade is a generation jo uska 1080 by 1080 ka post aata hai hum ta us news mante hain not you know not uh, valuing print media or any other, any other thing hum sochte hain ki jab tak ki maine fade is usa ki news nahi share kari i'm not a part of the woke quote unquote jo sare i'm trying to say a lot of things here basically my point is that there's no central myth that binds us all together we're moving in two different directions um i have a couple of theories about why this is happening uh what do you think about this because there is clearly two different indias now so um fail is a friend i'm sorry and no 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 she she's very smart yeah uh uh followers may not be smart a lot of them may not be smart but she's very mai faridabad ke andar hu the girl in balabgarh got shot but i i hear mumbai's creative sharing fair uses as gray newspaper block on their instagram stories to know about it i mean i read about it i saw people talking about it you actually analyze what face says she does it in a very smart way which leaves a lot unsaid hmm where a lot of the nuance lies right um i think face one of those people that actually gets the anthropological angle of things i mean she chooses to only play one side that's per- perfectly okay my thing is with most of this thing if you generalize that entire sort of left spectrum mm. <coughs> there are two um uh, schools one is the anthropology school one is the sociology school mm. and basically for me sociology is anthropology plus humbug because you base it off anthropology and then you add all kinds of nonsensical bullshit on top of it so i have very little 
respect for sociology in that sense as much as I have for anthropology. Now, you look at it anthropologically, the, the fundamental things these people forget are that they are trying to impose first world standards on a third world country. And this is where the right ends up being such gandus and shooting themselves in the foot because they keep saying, you know, uh, um, kya tha? Saksham Bharat, something Bharat? I, I don't know. Saksham and, Bharat, matlab? Five trillion dollar economy. Uh, hum developed country hone wale hai. We are already emerged. You know, a a gora tattoo aake bolta hai. Uh, they say India is an emerging country. I think you are already emerged. Ah, hum emerge ho gaye. Hum first world ho gaye. <laughs> first world ho gaye hai. Hmm. Gando sale mahadar chok. Anyway, so is me kya hota hai ki ye log they don't understand what is what is the definition of a first world country mm. it isn't just money okay it's a whole load of things the it, it is that you have gotten industrialized till the 70s it was actually manufacturing after the 70s it became services where services contributes about 70% of your economy <laughs> uh, agriculture is less uh, lesser um very high standard of human development but most importantly there is the state monopoly on violence you can't just go around rioting and shit like that right the law will always punish you there is very good policing and the only person realistically capable of carrying out violence out there is a the state and b any kind of terrorist organization yeah ye log idhar samajhte nahi hai we are a pre industrial economy we never industrialized we were the worst of both capitalist and socialist in that we adopt socialism but our socialism was so third rate and shitty it couldn't even industrialize us kam se kam stalin ne uh, russia ko industrialize to kiya na kam hmm. se kam mao se tumne uh, china ko to industrialize kiya na hmm? uh, uh, whatever you think about vietnam's leadership or north korea's leadership for that matter they industrialized those countries people forget that till 1979 south korea was the failure north korea was the success story north korea had the second highest per capita income in asia after japan till 1979 okay today north korea is a deindustrialized state okay they they industrialized they are a post industrial state they are not an agrarian state though they have become agrarian they are a post industrial agrarian state these are simple things these people don't get india never achieved industrialization india never achieved urbanization therefore and you know urbanization tends to break up all these caste uh, lines and things like that the best solution mm. caste is urbanization in that sense because it becomes impossible to retain caste structures and justify them in an urban environment right uh, uh, so on so forth aaj kya hota hai because all our bpos and things are big we've got the same ratio of industrialization to services which is about say 20 20 20 30% uh, industry and about uh, 50 60 70% services we think we're a first world country which we're not because remember in germany when you're talking about the 20 30% of the economy each person's value add there is about 50 60000 euros mm in india the value add of those industries is about 5 600 euros at best right so just because you've got the percentages right then you have these idiots who talk about leapfrogging you are going to leapfrog into the information age as a bahut sare hippopotamus rhinoceros mantri gan bhi hain jo bolte hain hum leapfrog karenge you can't leapfrog see what happens is after 2 300 years of the monopoly of violence that a state has hmm. people naturally do not go around doing honor killings because they know there are consequences they've been born to, after 3 4 generations they realize they can't just take a pitchfork and go kill the witch they realize usne mere behan ke sath soa hai main gun leke usko uda nahi sakta hu hmm this this takes time they don't get that so what happens is that is why a western society can now say that we are going to decentralize 
you know, people can come out and have protests. People can do this. People can do that. You can't have in a pre-industrial state because the moment you say you can protest, it re- results in rioting. Mm. You know, everybody wants to say Shaheen Bagh peaceful tha, but remember Shaheen Bagh was the peaceful afterthought of a riot that started off in Silampur and that Jamia Milia ka wo uh, jo police hamla hua tha and all of that. <coughs> which after they got beaten, after they got tear gas, they then pretended to be peaceful and came and started sitting down in Shaheen Bagh. And once they realized that kuch nahi hone wala hai, it morphed again into the Delhi riots. Mm. Okay. So these people just don't get anthropology. And I find that very, very problematic. Aaj, if you say that, you know, we need to be like Europe, they need to be individual rights and la di da di da you're going to have a million riots all over the bloody place. Even in the West, you know, wokeism, today what you're seeing in the name of woke and cancel culture is basically the verbal and social equivalent of a medieval European pogrom. Mm. You're not targeting the Jew. It's not blood libel saying, Jew ne mera beta kha liya, uska khun pee liya. You're targeting a whole different set of people, heretics, whatever, whatever, who are not going with the church orthodoxy. You're still attacking them. So, you know, what we're realizing even in the West is the West might have made a mistake in adopting these information age paradigms of individual liberty because manufacturing requires a strong state. The information age requires the state to take a back seat and allow people to take the front seat. But you can't get into manufacturing without a strong state. So people saying that the state needs to take a backseat. Mind you, it's both the right and the left saying this. The left says this because they take cut and paste foreign uh, this thing. The right say this because they think we're already a first world country and therefore we should adopt these norms. Yeah. You still haven't had a strong state. You still have to achieve a strong state first. And then we are now realizing, thanks to the West, that you know this people first approach that is happening there this woke culture and cancel culture and pronouns and blah, blah, bullshit. We're actually going back to the medieval period because their speech controls today in the West are as bad as they were in, say, the early 1800s. Damn. You've actually gone back 100 years in terms of freedom of expression in the West. I'll give you an example of what you were just referring to um, about the idea of freedom of speech in India. Uh, I've had friends from Mumbai University and I've had friends from Ashoka University, sadly, sadly about the latter. Um, And both of those universities have mandatory gender and society classes slash courses. The interesting part about both of those courses is, well, they're written by some sort of Indian sociologist, generally the case, and they usually copy paste from whatever they see in American universities, right? And so you have these extensive passages on the six types or the third wave or the three waves of feminism and and, and the various, uh, you know, binary, non-binary identities, the whole thing without have, without necessarily saying all of it is crap. I, I want to say that having 19 year old Indians uh, trying to figure out how to pay their rent, reading that shit and then getting on Twitter and, you know, like uh, using that as as a way to, make an identity for themselves to leverage themselves forward because this is the education they're receiving. I mean, that's pathetic. I, 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 I saw the same thing in Boston when I was in the East coast, because East coast is again a hub for this. Um, I mistakenly casually went to a sex and social life class. Um, and obviously got a D I thought I would, you know, Im- impress the professors by, uh, by like basically, you know, fully supporting their agenda. But, um, I think they, 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 they caught me on and, all of that. But the point is, it, the, I was like the only guy in the class. Um, it's all women and, and there's no scope for even like a more, I don't know, like, like a prudent, uh, a prudent conversation around sex or like even may, maybe we need, don't need to go so far because I think the, the problem with the left is it doesn't know where to draw the line. And you can just take that on, especially now with you have these, you know, third rate academics from the US who fly over to India and here they get empowered. They're like, okay, let's, let's spread our fucking lies to the Indian public. No problem. These kids are paying five lakh rupees a year. Let's do it. <laughs> what do you think about that? But remember, this is not new. Ever since the colonial period, even hmm. before that, you had 
गोरा घटिया घटिया लोग कॉकनीज एंड पता नहीं कैसे कैसे जो दो टके के लोग फ्रॉम क्योंकि उनका गोरा चमड़ा था वाइट ट्रैश बेसिकली वाइट ट्रैश हुड कम हियर एंड बिकॉज दे वेर सम कर्नल इन द ब्रिटिश आर्मी और वॉट एवर दे वुड गेट टू प्ले गोल्फ विद द महाराजा एंड सोशलाइज विद द महाराजा and this is what happens with white journalists in india the vast majority of them are complete white trash probably born of inbreeding their father is probably their brother their brother is probably their grandfather their mother is probably their sister no i'm dead serious if you look at most of the white journalists in delhi they're complete fucking white trash but because they are white here they automatically slot themselves some 10 15 and this is your classic brown person um infidelity uh, yeah complex gora hai to profound hoga they slot about 15 16 rungs over their social uh, uh, class yeah so this is number 1 number 2 what happens is when uh, see i i still don't get this thing about pronouns देख मेरा तेरा जो वॉइस है ना वो अच्छा सा गाढ़ा मर्द की वॉइस है मेरा जो वॉइस है काफी स्क्वीकी है डोनल्ड डक की तरह की कि 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 तो जब भी मैं किसी को कॉल करता था हुआ है इट बी लाइक यस मैम ओके मैम नो मैम मैम आपका नाम क्या है अभिजीत हो सॉरी सर आई गोटन सो यूज टू इट इट डेन आई यूज टू फाइंड इट क्वाइट अम्यूजिंग इट नेवर इरिटेटेड मी तो आजकल यू नो आई यूज कम्प्लीटली जेंडर बाइनरी टर्म्स फॉर माई सेल्फ मोस्टली टू मॉक दुक्स बिकॉज आई बी लाइक हाँ मैं जा रही हूँ मैं करती हैं बिगर जोक आउट हियर यू नो आई डू दिस दिस जेंडर बाइनरी थिंग एंड प्रिटेंडिंग टू बी अ गर्ल फॉर फन द फैक्ट दैट समबडी एक्चुअली टेक्स इट सीरियसली what kind of a jobless piece of shit you must be i mean you're literally an aborted fetus that has come back to life if you think pronouns are important i mean you're not even a bloody aborted fetus yaar you're the bloody discarded placenta placebo next i think it this is very important when we understand how language leads to egalitarianism or not in every other language why is society in the anglophone countries australia new zealand england england less so for uh, complex historical reasons mm. but america england new zealand australia the uh, canada the five eyes why are they such you know uh, horizontal societies you know there isn't much hierarchy class and all of that like in any of these countries a millionaire and a um, झाड़ू पोछा वाला विल बी सिटिंग एट अ बार हैविंग अ बियर टुगेदर एंड दिल एक्चुअली गेट अपसेट इफ यू थिंक यूर दैट बिकॉज यू लैंडेड अप इन रोल्स रॉयस यू आर सम हाउ सुपीरियर टू दैट सोसाइटी विल बी एब्सुलटली ब्रूटल टू यू सो वाई डिट दिस हैपन सिंपल इट्स बिकॉज इंग्लिश गॉट रिड ऑफ द दी एंड द दाओ दे से Thou said, uh, for if it, and that is the difference between tu and aap. Mm. In Hindi, it is uh, tu karega kya, which mm. is equality. Aap karenge kya, you're automatically slotting them above you. You're creating right. hierarchy just by your words. English had that because it was again, you know, it's a Germanic language. So it's like in German, for example, will you have a coffee? Habs tu kafe. But uh, agar uh, shraddha se bolna ho, haben zi kafe. Mm. You're automatically creating that class in uh, French. It's vu nu, a uh, tu, uh, and then vu uh, vu. Uh, vu is up. Tu is tu. The right. same in Italian. Voi and tu. Tu is tu. Voi is up. Okay. Mm. So English got rid of that at the end of the Shakespeare. Ke baad, eighteen hundreds, end of eighteen hundreds. I don't know if it was consciously. that uh, the industrial revolution saw to it that you got rid of it or reverse but the moment you got rid of all these de thou de thine blah 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 it becomes a flat society mm. whereas in germany and france you still do not have a flat society 
all right uh, it, it may be very open and egalitarian uh, kind of but uh, germany social climbing is harder than it is in india why is that uh because they're very stuck up on class and things like that so you go to any german house if you press the bell you will see herr schickel gruber phd phd2 phd3 mbbs mba M, uh, blah 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 all their titles will be there mm. <coughs> now one part of this is language now what these pronouns want to do is they want to go back to they not he said they said Mm. I think it is enabling gender neutral language it is not it is in fact bringing back a hierarchy in addition to making it gender neutral right so for example in the masculine uh, uh, there is no masculine and feminine in the plural mm. uh, up he is up she is up right oi wo z is masculine feminine up so it is gender neutral but it created hierarchy mm. you're doing the same thing here and they don't realize it but you know the more we go ahead the more we're going back in terms of freedom of expression in terms of blasphemy in terms of sacrilege in terms of uh, uh, uh hierarchy it, it is actually the the progressives are unwittingly the most regressive people around because they actually want to take us back 100 150 years hmm. more yeah they choose this hill that to die on that's why it becomes their prison because they can't escape themselves in a way but where i will disagree with you is i would say hmm. that they are succeeding they are succeeding because see the international left is global the international there is no such thing as the international right the right is a localized phenomenon in every country Yeah, the left is fundamentally a global phenomenon, and part of the right in in countries is not even <clears throat> well versed in the English language. It exists only in local languages. Exactly right. So it's very focused on the micro. So what happens is these people are creating international networks. They're creating the narrative to which everybody else is forced to respond. Hmm. They are pollinating. Uh, even though they've been out of power in India for what seven years now. uh all the corporate jobs and things are reserved for people uh who subscribe to their uh, this thing you look at facebook twitter the uh, uh the intake is almost exclusively from the congress liberal ecosystem even in america republicans find it very diff- difficult to get jobs after they leave uh democrats already have their jobs lined up for them yeah so there is a lot to be done out here i think one of the things i'm working on is building an international right uh there are problems for example uh the american right has fundamental contradictions you like i said the right has to believe in the monopoly of violence of the state but american gun rights fundamentally contradict that but remember again gun rights when was the second amendment brought in when you still had native americans attacking white settlements hmm uh raping kidnapping women eating people alive what not what not hmm? allegedly uh, yeah it was still the wild wild west you still had indian attacks and things like that hmm. that is when you had the need for state militias to protect the people and the right to bear arms okay uh so this is you you can't reconcile a 17th uh, an 18th century um uh, law with modern uh uh, uh Uh, the modern reality of the united states so this is where the american right gets it wrong in india this isn't an issue with the right we all agree the state has the right to the monopoly on violence gun rights isn't an issue here so how are you going to create that linkage this fundamental mm. right second is abortion the indian right doesn't have a view on abortion of course there is no such thing as an indian uh, uh, economic right because what we call the right in india is just saffron communists mm they they want the same leninist marxist flag they're happy with the hammer and sickle they just want the red to change to saffron bas theek hai uh that way if you look at modi he's basically a saffron lenin mm-hmm. uh, really no difference between them uh, uh but the american right believes in individual liberty up until the point where the woman's vagina begins 
everything is individual liberty but the woman's vagina belongs to the church you can only do what the church says you cannot have abortions theek hai so there there are how do you reconcile these points of view uh it's tough uh, uh you know the australian right i'm not going to get into it uh the australian right has a, a, a the australian british right i think are the most well grounded in that sense you know they they're much more um they have more consistent right wing positions but right. how to reconcile the indian right i uh, say the indian right for example freedom of religion hmm. they don't want forceful conversion now what the fuck is forceful conversion because if somebody is alluring you with rice or college admissions that is forceful they are saying convert karo hum tumko ye denge why should you be banned boss it's a transaction simple as that it's a transaction it's that simple you know if if one person thinks that it is worthwhile for him to convert for a rice bag or a college admission who the hell am i to say no what is preventing you from starting your own colleges agar wo chawal de raha hai tum usko basmati do ban nahi doge have you noticed this you know this is a point i keep making when christian missionaries come to india the first thing they do is set up schools and community assistance centers hmm the first thing hindu groups do when they get money is to set up on hideously ugly temple in the same bloody 1200 year old chora or hoishala or uh, uh, whatever style it was very relevant in those days that architectural style is not relevant today because there was a skill in hand carving it out of stone there is absolutely no skill in replicating it in concrete which can be molded concrete is basically plaster of paris that's much harder think right. of right 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 what you to bachcha bhi kar sakta hai yaar usko play do do he will make a temple replica that's why that's why all of ua looks like it's 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 a beautiful fake it is but you know the uae it's very interesting i first went to the uae in the 80s when dubai airport we had aero bridges in delhi and in those days dubai did not have aero bridges uh it uh, the sense of interiors and style used to be hideous there used to be purple carpets and green walls and we constantly used to make fun of arab aesthetics being uh, if it hurts your eye mm उन दिनों में ये सदाम हुसैन ने हलाबजा को बॉम्ब किया था यू नो द कुर्दिश विलेज ड्यूरिंग द इंटरनल वॉर ही पुट सारिन और मस्टर्ड गैस ऑन हलाबजा इट वाज अ हॉरिबल हॉरिबल जोक दैट यू नो व्हाट सारिन एंड मस्टर्ड गैस डू टू द कुर्द्स अरब आर्किटेक्चर एंड एस्थेटिक्स डू टू योर आईज या टुडे यू गो टू द यूएई दे आर एक्स्ट्रॉर्डिनरीली डिफरेंट you know they acquired that class that grace that cultivation and all of that and look they become such a progressive society for a muslim monarchy to go around saying you know you can have live in relationships you can all everybody knows you get alcohol free it is easier to come across alcohol and pork in the uae than it is to come across uh, uh, alcohol in india there is no stigma attached to the purchase of alcohol in the uae right so i'm not saying that it's progressive or anything i'm just saying ki alcohol is a taboo and the moment you feel that you can liberalize a taboo you're progressive so their their class has gone up their uh, uh, aesthetics have gone up their social values have become much more liberal much mm-hmm. quicker than india and they started off much worse than india remember that the indian rupee used to be the currency of the uae really aur hum kahan hai uae bahrain I think even Qatar used to use the Indian rupee. It was called uh, uh, because you know uh, the British Empire's monetary policy used to be run out of Delhi. Hmm. The Indian rupee was the common currency for all of them till the 1960s when Mrs. Gandhi devalued the rupee. Damn! I had no idea. I was when I was in Dubai last. The dirham was 13 rupees. <clears throat> That was in 2006 or five. अब ज़्यादा हो गया शायद. I think it must be in the 50s or 60s. I don't know. I want to एक मैं एक सेगवे लेना चाहता हूँ टॉक अबाउट समथिंग कम्पलीट डिफरेंट देर इज अ वेराइटी ऑफ 
the US soldier who became famous I'm talking about Jocko Willink if you if you've heard of him or I'm talking about David Goggins I'm I'm sure you must have heard of him no so there's so the, so Jocko Willink is basically this navy seal commander who realized that he has golden gold leadership ideas and uh, once he left the navy seals he started his own management consulting firm you know like using military tactics to help you you know you know fucking you know do corporate mazedar cheese and then there's David Goggins who's like a beast of a motherfucker he was fat all his life you know was abused and stuff turned his life around ran a, ran a bunch of ultra marathons right the interesting thing both of these guys and other people in the US military is that they have the opportunity to become personal brands right and uh, make a name for themselves and the US also has a glorified outfit uh, known as the seals that all american movies can't stop showing off right why is the indian army and i'm using my words very carefully here or the indian military quote unquote largely right is either made up of quiet actors or people who are just you know mouthpieces for controversy why why can't they have a nice exit like that because we have never had that concept we've got this job for life concept where you know job security is very important that's again a classic of a third world country hmm sarkari naukri mil gayi ab hum safe hain we shouldn't do anything to rock the boat right if you quit your job at 35 40 what do you want to do hmm kaun tumko job dega bhai hmm right so there's a lot of issues that go into this we don't even have any glorified uh, come like we've got the marcos the marine commandos but who's made a great movie about them yeah i've That's only heard about them from you right now what have they achieved they have not even done power projection boss so it's a combination of a lot of things remember you know when they say the supreme court is the best of india or the army is the best of india it, it it's sort of incubated the best that is complete rubbish it's anthropological bullshit your army and your supreme court it is impossible in an open society like india in south africa you can incubate these uh, you know uh, spheres of success because uh, in apartheid south africa because there was a white first world economy which was 25% and the 75% which was the black third world economy yeah in india you can't do that china can do it because it can say the east coast will develop first the west coast will develop later so it can create these centers of excellence in india you can't do that you can't say mumbai will develop first madras sab tum chup raho they'll all start protesting the very next day why next day within an hour india you can't do that so the supreme court the military they are just as inept just as corrupt just suffering from the exact same maladies that i described to you with the ias hmm. or the political class they are no better they are no worse they are not an isolate this belief that somehow institutions are isolated from society they are not institutions represent a society you will have the same combination of shit and glory that india has in general so first of all there's nothing to write home about second because you're a third world country hmm. very limited job opportunities uh you will not have these um uh mechanisms where you can find um lateral careers or swap careers midway mm uh because in my formative years look most of my childhood i was brought up outside of india i'm aware yeah. most uh right most of my um uh, adult life i spent in australia so i could just swap jobs whenever i wanted because there was the opportunity out there main gaya udhar mummy se jhagad ke mere pocket mein paisa nahi tha isliye maine hospitality kiya फिर हॉस्पिटैलिटी तीन चार साल किया बोर हो गया एक साल पढ़ाई की हॉस्पिटैलिटी की फिर तीन चार साल हॉस्पिटैलिटी किया बोर हो गया सो इट वाज लाइक हां चलो मैं आई हैव टू डू स्ट्रेटजिक स्टडीज एंड फॉरेन पॉलिसी व्हिच इज व्हाट आई वांट टू डू इनिशियली राइट बट आई हैड अदर ऑप्शंस बिकॉज़ आई गॉट माय पायलट्स लाइसेंस इन ऑस्ट्रेलिया आई गॉट माय डाइव मास्टर्स लाइसेंस इन ऑस्ट्रेलिया सो आई कुड टीच आई कुड बिकम अ डाइव इंस्ट्रक्टर इफ आई वांटेड इन दोस डेज आई वाज एक्चुअली फिट आई वाज लाइक द फैट पिग आई एम राइट नाउ पिग तो नहीं भैंस की तरह हूं मोर लाइक बट सो आई कुड डू दैट एंड यू नो व्हेन आई रोट टू द यूनिवर्सिटी इन ऑस्ट्रेलिया माय बीकॉम वाज वेरी बैड बिकॉज़ आई हैड जीरो इंटरेस्ट इन गोइंग टू माय हॉरेबल कॉलेज 
you know i learned more in school than i did in college i did not learn anything in college and you had schools all across the world yeah uh, but also in india i learned a lot mm. in school because you know those were the pre migration schools it was still the residual effects of 1991 it's still not not started being felt in those schools hmm dps mathura road or vidya mandir mailapur or tindale bisco in shrinagar it was still that old charmed um uh, where you had teachers that took individual interest in their students yeah you know where you were encouraged to sort of problem solve it wasn't just learning by rote you know it, uh, the f- school that i finished off in vidya mandir mailapur they were like bachche we're not interested in what marks you get we're interested in how much you learn that's crazy but it used to exist at one point of time in india it used to exist uh, you know there were other schools like padma sheshadri that had advertised you know our children got in uh, 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 iit g we got the f- top 15 slots avidya mandir never used to do that they like dekho bhai we don't even care if you fail we will give you admission and you know in lot of these schools you had the pre boards where if you didn't clear the pre boards they won't mm. let you for the board exams because you would bring down the school's rating yeah this happened in my school as well uh, in my school as a kuch nahi tha you could do whatever you wanted their focus was are you happy as a child that's crazy it, it's it sounds something that is supposed to be futuristic something that i was you know like hear my young cousin say to me like hamare school mein na ma'am ko ma'am nahi auntie bolte hain which is actually something that happens by the way which is weird i don't know why auntie agar bolo phat se ja japda padta tha it it was good because there were certain things that were maintained ma'am had to be ma'am yeah but you know it wasn't like you didn't get 98% i'm not going to let you write the exam why why did you get 50% mm. mere me, me, teaching mein koi kami thi kya and then you know uh, uh, for me i was one of those people where if i enjoyed the subject i would do extremely well in it if i didn't uh, enjoy the subject i used to get gold gappas so mm. if my maths results uh when it was integration differentiation i'd get something like 98 9900 theek hai when it was something else i forget there were trigonometry was uh yeah uh, uh for a lot of trig um not even trig i forget what the other thing was uh, we had lots of shit i used to get around zero yeah and you know my maths teachers could never understand they actually used to sit all the maths teachers used to get together and discuss me in the staff room they used to call my mother over and say what is it we don't get this on one hand this guy is scoring 100 in this particular part of maths why is it in this part of maths he is scoring zero and it's not like i i was even scoring 40 50 i was literally scoring zero because i had decided in my mind i don't like this i don't give a shit so i'm not going to score mm right in physics i was like um I, I used to be like uh, 50 60 marks till it came to hydrocarbons sorry uh, in chemistry when it came to hydrocarbons i was like 98 99 and i was getting competitive jab wo cheating karna hota tha na i used to give people wrong formula so that they wouldn't get the correct formula and i would write the right formula oh yeah it, it was so competitive ki mere ko dikhana hai ki main i know about hydrocarbons better than all of you yeah so were you always disagreeable as a child or did this you know come as a as a uh, as a result of growing up in different countries and i don't know like when you're moving around a lot it's hard to make friends so um no i wasn't my te- i there wasn't a single teacher i had who didn't love me except the hindi teachers all my hindi teachers hated me because i hated hindi and the you know the uh, hatred was mutual mm. uh the uh, and you know it's very surprising it was actually a class issue um i'll explain how uh two things one is that i never had friends of my age as a kid except outside of school and there was a reason for it because you know my dad and my mom when they had guests at home they'd always insist that i come and sit down and talk to i wasn't meant to be hidden away to play by myself i was meant mm. to come talk to their guests so the conversations i used to have were very very mature even from that age so you know i wasn't able to link into conversations of people my age it was always talking about jean paul sartre or uh, you know uh, tolstoy or something like that in the third or fourth standard 
when if you go went to dps mathura road and said tolstoy railway banjo chal phutiya se ha chal chole gulche khade chal ke so all my friends till i hit the age of 30 hmm i had very few friends my own age hmm so there was that incompatibility because i was always brought up with an adult conversation hmm the second problem was uh in terms of this whole um um what was the second part of your question i forgot my train of thoughts i i was asking uh, were you always disagreeable as a kid considering you had to move around a lot ha huh. so uh, uh the 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 second part of this was that um you formed opinions quite quickly but you also learned a very good skill which was a bullshit meter mm. you who to absorb information from and who not to absorb information from because you know when children are around people think that they don't understand what you're saying they do they do so you know you 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 gain that bullshit meter very very early in life mm and it kind of screwed my social interactions over because imagine till you're 30 you don't really have friends your own age hmm right but after 30 it was fine i had a lot of friends my own age so uh, i actually became a lot more social after 30 than i was before 30 all my friends were much much elder to me i when you were talking about how kids are not stupid i can i can't help but understand also uh your your parents have guests over right you listen to your guests uh, to their guests talk about stuff then there's the aftermath of the conversation where your dad really tells you or your mom really tells you ye aisa aadmi hai to ye baatein bol raha tha na iski faltu ki baat sunne ki zarurat nahi hai right that also happens so you have this feedback loop where you sort of i don't know like get good at detecting people's bullshit at an early age and i, I can't help but see how that makes for good playground talk because you can just shit on people left and right then hello ah uh, you yeah. can't i uh my ah uh, abhijit i think i lost you my pen at picking up can you hear now yeah yeah yeah. yeah yeah i can i can okay okay so uh my parents never got people home and that's a very early life lesson i learned mm. that they did not like if they did not like people they would go out for lunch with them they would never bring them home hmm right um the other thing for me especially was so this is something i do even now if i don't like you i will not call you over to my house i will meet you 100 times outside somewhere <coughs> but i will never call you home uh and you know when i call you home i will cook for you the maid will not cook for you i will cook for you so you're initiating people into your friendship that's that's your way of doing it exactly um the other thing was my father was a uh, communist uh you know he was ve- he'd only worked for socialist parties all his policy recommendations used to be very socialistic i don't know how you have a socialistic defense policy but he did hmm. uh my mom on the other hand was always a capitalist so even within the same house जो भी अमेरिका और यूएसएसआर के बीच में चल रहा होता था इंटरनेशनल स्टेज पे वो रोज मेरे घर पे मम्मी पापा के बीच चल रहा होता था दैट्स क्रेजी सो फ्रॉम माय फादर आई यूज्ड टू हियर अमेरिका इज शिट कैपिटलिज्म इज शिट योर मॉम इज अ मोरन फ्रॉम माय मॉम आई यूज्ड टू हियर योर डैड इज अ लायर देयर आर ब्रेड क्यूज इन द सोवियत यूनियन देयर इज नो फूड इन द सोवियत यूनियन दिस दैट लाडी डाडी डा सो यू नो यू गेट दिस थिंग वेयर it's a unique set of circumstances i guess that i was brought up in mm. because you know you want the stimulus around you i could have completely grown up to be one of those dumb idiots whose idea of great intellect is listening to romila thapar and whose idea of culture is uh uh aaj aaj kon bali would star hai yaar i don't know what the bollywood stars are quoting gulzar or like for what's his face javed that's the bollywood like what what bollywood star koi bollywood aajkal bollywood star kon hai uh ranveer singh ha ha watching ranveer singh do thumka jhumka whatever <laughs> i'm not i and you know i mean i was just blessed i guess to have parents hmm 
the first time we landed up in Moscow, my dad dragged uh, my dad dragged me to the opera and to the ballet. That's crazy. And I got so addicted to it because we used to get free tickets. Every ticket that I could get, I used to go sit in the ballet. By yourself? By myself. Uh, Moscow was a very safe place in those days. You know, the, I mean, you, you simply would not get kidnapped. I just go sit in the ballet or sit in the opera, listen to stuff. Then we moved to Vienna. Vienna, me, uh, you had to pay for the tickets, and I used to bleed my father dry, forcing him to buy me opera tickets. Mm. In uh, Madras, the thing was because my mom used to keep going for the Kacheri season, which is the uh, Tamil classical version, the uh, Karnataka classical version of your opera season in Vienna. I used to keep going for that, so I used to enjoy it a lot. Most of these up and coming stars like T M Krishna and all of that, we won't talk about T M Krishna right now. They're my classmates. I knew them. They're all my friends. Hmm. So there was this thing because even the social circles we used to move in in those days, where you know, they they used to be it used to be a relatively flat social circle in those days, because this whole migration from the rural areas to urban areas hadn't happened. Vienna was anyway very very class conscious. So, you know, I really used to enjoy going around looking down at people like that from the top of my nose. You know, to me, the class can't get to me, the class can't get. And yeah. so, you know, you were one of the few Indians where one of those few people that locals could talk to without fear of the KGB knocking on your door at night. You couldn't do that with an American diplomat. Interesting. So, you know, it the things just added up. to have parents that introduce you to culture uh, the, the bad thing was they in a sense poisoned me if i said i wanted to listen to michael jackson they'd be like seriously i took you to the opera and you're listening to michael jackson and so i'd be mm. like michael jackson thoda ghadiya ke sab ka hoga mai nahi sunenge and then i realized it's fine you know it's fine to listen to techno music it's fine to listen to all the shit if you could just hold your own against your parents and say look the tune is good don't be so snooty you you had to come up with the argument <coughs> against it um my mom always used to take a very dim view of me eating beef and pork my father always used to encourage me to keep eating beef and pork <laughs> so you know for me to be a capitalist from my mom's side But a compulsive beef and pork eater from my father's side. Yeah. On you know that communist adage of pissing off as many traditionalists as you can. Look, I ate it because I really liked it. I still eat it because I really like it. I'm not trying to piss people off. The pissing off is an added bonus. It makes me happy when I piss people off. So you uh, were born into pretty much what is. can be best described as duality constant duality right from your home life i mean fuck you know parents fight it's usually stances around something that they said or something they did in your case it's it's like the emotional is the political the political is the emotional and and yeah. <laughs> it was all mixed up and you know it uh, uh, my parents divorced when i was 5 mm. uh and you know they couldn't see eye to eye on anything the only thing they always agreed on was that they knew better than their ministers the ministers are a horrible class that need to be fixed and they shouldn't mess around with executive privilege and executive knowledge which is their sole prerogative to exercise uh so you know when a current prime minister dotes over his bureaucrats so much i'm sniggering to myself and having a laugh ki boss some there was a bjp leader who shall remain unnamed who nailed it within the first 6 months of modi taking power he said this is not a bjp government it's an ias government with outside support from the bjp hmm like the vp singh government wow abhijit um do you have more time i can end the yeah, conversation right. now if you like i've got time fantastic then there's more things i want to discuss with you particularly around the idea of walking around vienna listening to all these you know operas and stuff I wonder now that you're back in India you've been living here for quite a while now was was it like weird to come back to India and realize ki are ye to sare aise hi hain aur mera seasoned cultured self ab thoda alag se apne aap ko dhalna padega did you have to sacrifice certain parts of the identities that you picked on when you were abroad picked no, up when you were abroad no not really you find your own space 
Mm. Uh, and that's a good thing about Delhi is that Delhi gets a whole cross section of people. Uh, the second thing is I travel a lot. This year has been horrible because of COVID. I haven't been able to travel. A, uh, right. At, but I usually in a year, I'd spend about three, four months abroad. Uh, usually there's the mandatory holiday, uh, summer holiday in Italy. Where I'm going to go to the beach and I'm going to go to the beach because I'm so tired. मेरा ब्लॉन्ड हेयर और ब्लू आईज थोड़ा ऑड लगता है तो मुझे जाके सूरज में बैठती हैं और वो काले हो जाते हैं पूरे पूरे तो अच्छा लगते हैं मेरे को बट आई ट्रेवल लॉट फॉर वर्क एंड आई गेट माय कल्चर फिक्सेस देयर बिकॉज आई गॉट फ्रेंड्स इन वर्चुअली एवरी सिटी इन यूरोप फ्रेंड्स आई लव हैंगिंग आउट विथ एंड हु लव हैंगिंग आउट विथ मी सो आई विल जस्ट गो प्लॉक देर एंड डू वॉट एवर इवन नाउ um for opera season i land up in vienna almost every year hmm. so you know i don't miss my life in that sense it's 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 perfectly intact i get i get what i want when i want it that's quite an admirable thing to say um in fact i have been podcast record kar rahe hain my goal by the end of by the middle of this year is to get to spain i have books around le- learning spanish because i have inklings of an idea of living a life something like yours where i'm able to manage my fears here in india uh you know show cause whenever i have to but then have those uh, i had a professor uh, once in college she was a professor of middle eastern history and she would talk about you know spending her new years in beirut and then you know having lovers in casablanca to mere ko idea bada far laga main ka agar if i could have multiple lives in other countries how awesome would that be but see that's the beauty of it I think you learn every trip that I go abroad people think I'm just traveling for the sake of traveling I'm not hmm. you know when you travel you learn so much you meet new people you have new experiences it 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 constantly enriches you uh like you know when I was a kid for example hmm. my uncle was posted in Baghdad and uh this was in Saddam Hussein was in power in the 84 hmm. 586 so one of those years i forget now um so i landed up in baghdad and you know i used to keep going to the iraq museum which you know after the invasion was looted there's nothing left there now um uh, uh, but my fondest memories there are of going to the iraq museum and at school i wanted to present a paper on the status of women in pre islamic uh, uh local uh, the the condition of women in, in local areas before islam came right you know, it was fascinating because first of all all the curators at the museum they were like really enthused by this kid who used to get dropped off every morning in the museum was coming to the museum every single day to admire everything uh and they like yaar ye 7 saal ka bachcha humko bahut pyara lagta hai so they used to like i told you you know i had this knack of picking up friends who were 30 40 years old when i was 7 8 years old hmm So I used to go sit with them, talk to them about these things. You know, they decipher all these cuneiform scripts for me. You know, they these letters, supposedly, uh, where I think they might have been destroyed uh, from uh, uh, the Prophet to uh, Khusro Anushirvan, the Sassanid Emperor. Because remember, Iraq was Persia at that point of time. Right. Uh, the capital was in Tisfun, which was out, the capital for most of. Uh, medieval persia was in tisfun which is in the outskirts of baghdad what's the name you said tisfun 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 uh called stesiphon in um uh, grecianized uh, versions but uh, called tisfun tisfun was baghdad effectively mm-hmm. um so you know it 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 was a really nice time and i learned so much from them that is what travel does to you it enriches you you learn new things i mean i've traveled often where i've learned nothing but then i've traveled to places where you learn small small things slowly 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 and you can aggregate them into your macro anthropological views or your social views and things like that and this is what really upsets me about the indian right you know there was this twitter campaign some 4 5 years back better than the taj mahal hmm how every indian nook and cranny little temple or whatever we only have temples realistically 
was better than the Taj Mahal. I'm like, boss, you're comparing apples and oranges. Why does something have to be better than the other thing? And secondly, if you want to nail this down purely to technical details, mm. Indian temples are not architecture; they are sculpture. Mm. Okay, uh, they are a piling up of rocks with sculptural elements. Uh, there is very little in terms of architecture involved, and my worry is because these people have not travelled, they don't get what they're talking about. So there was one idiot called Ugranarsima or something like that. I forget his name. Uh, he was talking about how this uh, fat, bald, gay idiot keeps saying, uh, uh, you know, Tanjore Temple is uh, not particularly great. Uh, look at the size of the Tanjore Temple, la di da di da. At the same time, in fact, a hundred years before the Tanjore Temple was being built, you had these great cathedrals in Germany being built by the Holy Roman Empire, hmm. starting from nine hundred till about ten uh, hundred or so. They're called the Kaiser domes. So you look at the Kaiser dome of Speyer or any of them; they are so huge. You know, uh, the Tanjore Temple is essentially either a chota sa sanctum sanctorum hai. और उसके ऊपर इतना सारा स्टोन है ठीक है इफ यू गो टू दथीड्रल वॉल्यूम इट सेल्फ कैन कंटेन दर टैंजोर टेम्पल विद इन इट दैट्स क्रेजी दैट इज कॉल्ड आर्किटेक्चर राइट इट डज रिक्वायर अ लॉट ऑफ स्किल दैट uh for a small sanctum sanctorum here to be able to hold so much stone above it uh if you look at the evolution of pyramids for example the first pyramid is the uh step pyramid which was steps zozer's pyramid it wasn't uh, very this thing because jo vacuum tha jo uh, uh, space tha upar it was almost near the top because what happens is the weight of stones becomes so much that it crushes the stone at the bottom so you know building something that high is an architectural feat then you had the bent pyramid the bent pyramid is because the uh, uh, the burial chamber was somewhere in the middle and they couldn't after you make that hole it becomes impossible to pile on more stones above that because it crushes that chamber onto itself so they bent the pyramid to reduce the weight of stones above the burial chamber finally you have the cheops the uh, uh, giza pyramids which attain the full pyramidal structure so in that sense tanjore is important because it managed to pile so much granite which is much heavier than sandstone onto a small sanctum sanctorum is interesting but it is nothing compared to an architectural feat where you can create so much internal volume i mean sure engineering terms this is a far greater feat i mean you are achieving in 1000 ad what the egyptians had managed to achieve in 2500 bc you know when julius caesar saw the pyramids he was closer to our time than to the time when the pyramids were built when julius caesar saw the pyramids 2500 years had passed when we see julius caesar only 2000 years had passed that is how that is the kind of antiquity you are talking about it takes a particularly narrow close minded idiot to think that india was better at everything was the mother of everything and the grandmother of everything yeah i think and i'm not <clears throat> particularly well versed in in the various narratives that are floating around on twitter or in the intellectual space uh, about the right or architecture in india is the intellectual space nahi hai ha nahi hai but um zyada tar chutiya space hota hai आजकल पता नहीं क्यों योगी को भी कैंसिल कर रहे हैं पता है योगी आदित्यनाथ इज बीइंग कैंसिल बिकॉज़ या योगी आदित्यनाथ इज बीइंग कैंसिल बिकॉज़ अपेरेंटली ही इज टू प्रो गे ट्रांस पर्संस ऑल राइट बिकॉज़ दे पास अ न्यू बिल समथिंग लाइक दैट वेयर दे कैन गेट एक्सेस इन कास्ट एंड ही हैज बीन एज अ क्षत्रिय हाउ कैन ही वायोलेट हिज स्वधर्म बाय टेकिंग सन्यास therefore he is getting cancelled by the right at the moment fantastic that you use the word kshatriya um, you know i wanted to discuss this with you particularly because i happen to be a kshatriya by caste gujar and it's just like a fucking uh, noose hanging on my neck all the time in my life and it's also a great sense of jab kuch kaam nikalwana hota hai they're like hey 
it's it's a very weird thing it's a very weird place to exist in and as a tamil brahmin no, no i don't know how much you identify of uh, you know as a Tamil, you, you don't right it's, it's i hear the word gujar at least 60 six, times a day uh, it's just whatever i do individually like maine kuch kara ye are ye gujaron ki tarah nahi hai ye gujaron ki tarah hai so everything i do my behavior is basically either a deviation from the norm the stereotype or adherence to the stereotype right and i'm so sick of it in fights they're like vinamru tu aage aaj i'm not fucking lanky i i can't fucking fight like i'll pr- probably like fight uh, like akeli se ja ke aise and i've always maintained this you know prakar and i had a blog in 2014 called the urban ampit it was the the story of three protagonists ek baniya ek gujar okay uh, ek baniya ek gujar ek punjabi that section kings you buggers have these days ha huh? and it was basically about like these city boys waking up to the fact that we live in a caste world kyunki hum itni sari baatein sun rahe the about progressivism and like you know our history textbooks and everything in our world was moving forward but the the generation of our dads my man like there's a vaishya samaj in faridabad there's a gujar samaj in faridabad there's a jhat samaj punjabi samaj 85% of the conversations i hear from the generation above me are about caste they have caste embedded into everything and we could help but caricature it and i wonder <laughs> i see clear humorous merits to it because it makes for great humor for all of us but beyond that like uh, so you know i i can't help you here because i had the same thing um you know when i was growing up the first i learned you know my parents had an intercaste marriage my father uh, was a uh, uh, caste bengali caste my mom mm. is Latin. and um it wasn't an issue for anybody at home uh not on my father's side not on my mother's side uh i never felt it in school mm. uh, even in school back in india uh the first i knew about caste was reading about it in the civics textbook I'm like oh so and for me it was very esoteric because I never been exposed to caste. Hmm. So when you come to Delhi, you know when they want to ask you your last name they've got this very curious thing I don't know if it still exists but un dinon mein kya bolte the tera caste kya hai. Do you say I'm Abhijit? But us baat kya hai? The caste kya hai? You should be really offended I'd be like what the fuck dude this is what I read about in books which is it's an evil practice and um yeah I didn't even know what the hell it was because I'd never seen it in practice. My stepfather was Dalit, hmm. right? And I didn't know about it till I joined college because it was never an issue. See, in our strata of society, the urbanized strata, caste is completely irrelevant, or so I thought. Hmm. Till. and it was you know this was that 10% of the population from whom for whom for whom all the quality institutions used to be run at one point of time hmm. till 1991 it lasted till 1998 it was in 1998 that you start seeing the transformative results of that migration and all of that right so 1998 it existed it was just completely irrelevant for us when we heard about the mandal commission it was the first actual translation of a uh, uh, of something esoteric and theoretical which studied about in school hmm. and now of course i'm much more uh, tuned to looking at caste though even now i don't understand what it's about because i really don't give a shit what caste you're from except for the fact that it helps me make jokes that's like, it yeah like remember your and my first interaction was are to gujjar hai na ja ke koi bhais chara ya aise kuch kar yeah you and everyone else yeah yeah and for 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 a lot of us it's just about the jokes value Yeah, you have Punjabi friends, so you can have Punjabi jokes. You have Sardi Sardi friends, so that you can have Sardi jokes. You have Madrasi friend because you can have Kali Kali Madrasi jokes. And those are the best jokes. Hote hai. But but we're not able to say that uh, in in discourse. You know, one of the things that Kushwan Singh pointed out, which I loved, he wrote this uh, memoir, like this, you know, this book of essays. He said, 
Indians can be witty. Indians cannot be humorous because all the societies that all the societies that that have the greatest jokes, you know, Jews are great jokers. There's a couple of others, right? Uh, it has to do with jokes about community and caste, things that we are not lines we are not willing to cross for humor. Which is why I have huge issues about the freedom of speech in it. uh there's so many restrictions to it um you know you can't diagnose a problem properly hmm you have to fit into certain left wing preconceived stereotypes if your analysis goes against that you're cancelled in the right wing you have to fit the narrative if it uh, goes against it you're cancelled you can't make cast jokes you can't make these jokes you can't make those jokes whereas the most virulently vitriolically anti-semitic jokes that i've ever heard i have heard them not just by jews but by jews in israel yes right the best holocaust jokes that i've heard have been in israel so and you know there's a thing they they won't tell you those jokes initially they they quite um rude to you up front yeah then once you become their friend they really open up and warm up to you and then they can't stop giving it to you so <laughs> I don't think we've achieved that level of maturity as a society. We're a very crude, crass, low-level society. The social discourse is so low class. Even the intellectual discourse in this country is such third-rate shit. It's very rare that you come across any very informed commentary in that sense. Hmm. and you know i i include ram guha and romela thapar in this that their commentary about society i actually find that kushwan singh was a much more astute observer of the indian mind uh and india than somebody like ram guha or romela thapar yeah i think because they both took themselves too seriously i haven't read much of those guys but one thing that so, is you know no no about yeah my- Sorry, so that's why you understand. I never take myself seriously. People, yeah, could, yeah. People keep telling me, Abhijit, you should take yourself seriously. Otherwise, people won't take you seriously. The cost of me taking myself seriously and other people taking me seriously is I stop learning. Yeah, I don't want to become an ossified fossil. So thank you very much. I'd rather you didn't take me seriously, but I'm not fossilizing myself. A nice little excerpt from Kushwan's book. Now that we're at it, is there's this. Uh, एक उसकी किताब है फ्रॉम रिटन इन 87 कॉल्ड सेक्स कॉटन स्कॉलरशिप राइट इट टॉक्स अबाउट इंडियन सेक्सुअल रिप्रेशन इन अ वे दैट यू नेवर हर्ड नो फकिंग जर्नलिस्ट कुड एवर डू इट नो फकिंग यू नो सोशल साइंस स्कॉलर आज जो बात करते हैं ना कि यू नो लेट्स नॉर्मलाइज कन्वर्सेशंस अराउंड पेनिस एंड वजाइनास दैट 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 फकिंग फेक ओवरयूज्ड ओवरसैचुरेटेड क्रैप ही हैड दिस ब्रिलियंट पैसेज व्हेयर ही इज लाइक सो ही इज ड्राइविंग इन ट्रेन रात का समय है ही इज इन द ही इज इन द लोअर बर्थ फैमिली एट ट्रेन ट्रेन स्टेशन a bride and groom they've just been married right out of common courtesy these passengers wake at the lower berth so that the bride and groom can sit in the train peacefully right bride is crying groom is you know a bit like lost mai kya kar raha hu right night passes um everyone in in that berth starts hearing voices and then suddenly kya hota hai train aise hilti hai light upar hoti hai awaaz aati hai hey ram and what they see is the bare buttocks of that man inside his wife her bare breasts just lying wo sara makeup wagera khula hua hai aise ekdam aise lete hue hain theek hai train ruk jati suddenly they realize oh fuck everyone is seeing us they quickly gather there you know like hamari izzat and and they leave and then he makes a commentary about how in rural india men sleep together mostly and women sleep together so the only time you can have sex or even have the the inkling of what sex could be is in in those transitional periods and then he says ek aur baar tab hota hai was when the mother in law wants it when she's like jao se doodh pila ke lao then only you can have a quickie no social scientist who's like i'm a sex researcher could ever get that insight seriously but see it's actually a lot deeper than that if you notice indian mothers don't want their unmarried kids to have sex absolutely i fucking agree even their 25 year old son is a virgin he most probably isn't hmm. but they think he's a virgin they think that 23 year old daughter is a virgin which she most probably is not mm. 
Uh, the second issue about that is you have no privacy. In India, the concept of privacy does not exist. So you, and because you live with your family, mm. your process of self discovery never really happens. And that, you know, that's very damaging to the individual because that period from 13, 14, basically puberty onwards, say 14 onwards till about 26, 27 is when your sexual discovery happens. Right. It's aborted, which produces a deeply dysfunctional society. So your only moments together are stolen moments where your only thing is to get it off quickly. Mm. Don't understand it as an art, as a whole uh, sequence of pleasure of exploring each other's body, of exploring all the erogenous zones, of honing your skills at it. Right. And that's why you find that even the sexual scene in India is so underdeveloped. You know, the, the, the kind of explore, sexual explorations you get in the West or even in Western porn, mm. you will never get in India because people don't explore that much. For them, it's just quickly taking off clothes, uh, doing it for 10, 12 minutes, however long it lasts for them. And then that's the end of it. One has to only look at Indian porn to realize how bad it is. I literally saw this one old I, man just I, sitting behind a woman, just on, except uh, some clips that Hor get it's, uh, it's, it can be used for research purposes. But like I just saw this this woman lying lifeless as as the great author G. Tile writes, most women in India who haven't been taught about the pleasures of sex and men either, they just... I, the man does the thing, the woman lies lifeless, right? If it's a heterosexual relationship. But I, in this video particularly, I saw a man just fondling her breasts without the inclination to necessarily do something about it, just sitting in the back and playing with it as if like it's a toy. And there wasn't like, there wasn't no, it wasn't leading to something. It's like, oh, I'm just casually, I have this, these fun bags in my hand and I'm just seeing, you know, bouncing them around. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Whatever WhatsApp forwards I've gotten, uh, I'm looking at it, going, what are they doing? What is the actual pleasure value of this? Where is the passion in this? Where is the erotica in this? Um, where is the erection in this? Mm. There's none. It's comedy value. It's not sexual value in that sense. Yeah. Right. And the other thing is, even the gay scene is no different. Because see, here we don't have a culture of homophobia. In India? In India. We don't have a culture of homophobia. We don't. I, I, it's, if yeah. you are a boy who gets caught out making, up with another, making out with another boy, the most you'll get is, kya kar rahe Fir se mat karo. In fact, it's better if you're gay and even intercast in a village. Uh -huh. It's just accepted. Boys do these things. Because it's a product of gender segregation. Hmm. And this I noticed when I went to Iran and all the Arab countries that, you know, homosexuality is considered very natural till you get married. Hmm. Can't you don't have the opportunity to socialize or screw around or intimate moments with a woman? You do it to a guy instead, and it's socially accepted. Mm. In India, bonks, homosexual bonks, even intercaste bonks would be totally accepted. On the other hand, I challenge you go to Haryana and find a rural intercaste boy, uh, a, a boy bonking a girl from another caste. Yeah, they won't come out alive. Forget the beating. They'll probably be killed. Yeah, most likely. I'll, so, yeah. um, you know, and then there was the story of, you know, two lovers in, uh, two female lovers in Odisha being thrashed. Mm. Imagine if it had been a boy and girl, what would have happened to them? So the two girls actually got off light compared to what a boy and girl would have gotten, gotten away with. They wouldn't have been able to get away with it. Mm. Right. So, you know, the, again, even this homophobia narrative is a, it's imported and it's planted out here. In the West, the hatred of homosexuals is so much. You have a lot of literature in the West. Forget literature. You have cases in the West where a neighbor will shoot his neighbor for just coming on to him. For just floating. 
just flirting. You, you've never had that here, right? Um, so what happens out here is they accept that this boy with boy, girl with girl is kind of probably less so girl with girl, more so boy with boy is kind of natural. Hmm. Uh, and it's sort of the man's prerogative to cheat anyway. Who he cheats with is up to him. So 99% of these Indian gay people that you meet, men, they've basically been cowards. They want the family car property and their inheritance. So they never come out to their parents and tell them and put their foot down and say, I'm not getting married. Right. Most of the people I know have told their parents, I'm gay. Like, side me jo karna hai kar lo na, par kar ke And because they want the papa ka Mercedes, papa ka ghar, papa right. ka the bribe. Yeah. they will go ahead with it. And then they will complain that they're leading repressed lives and all of that. Who told you to? If you didn't have the courage to say, you know, screw you, don't blame society for it. Hmm. I have a friend who's been brave enough to sort of tell his father. And, you know, the father is now protecting him for the rest of the father then requested the son. Please don't tell your mother. She's old. She's weak. She'll die if she does this. Hmm. But I will ensure that you don't get married. So you also have fathers like that. And mind you, the age gap between this guy and his father is quite, he was a late child. He, he was um, mm. he was born when his father was 53, 54. So the father's now yeah. um, 80 almost. Yeah, they call them Budapik Santan in a, in a disparaging manner. But yeah. So, you know, but isn't it beautiful that an 80-year-old man has that attitude towards his son? So you've had a lot of this. So, you know, I don't accept this homophobia narrative in India at all. Hmm. It's 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 always been it's okay, but it's not a relationship. A relationship, hmm. a marriage, a heterosexual marriage that produces kids. So what you find is that when you go to gay bars and things like that, there is an age gap. You see, it ends at 20, 25 to twenty seven when they all go get married, and then they come back when they're about thirty five, thirty six. Right. There's that missing generation in between. It's changing now, of course, but about ten years back, this was the case. Hmm. And what would happen is when they'd come back, they'd come back horrible, nasty creatures because for them, the gayness was just about the sex. It wasn't about the intimacy, the mind connect, the ease of being with another person, a relationship, love, nothing. It was just sex. Hmm. And combine this with the sex as the sex exploration thing that we spoke about living with family earlier, yeah. the particularly toxic mix. Yeah, a friend of mine, uh, Kanu Bhel, he's made films like Titli and uh, I don't know if you watched Titli, but he's coming out of, with a film uh, called Agra, which is about having sex, sex in closed spaces in India, right? Which is about privacy, how we allow people to invade our personal lives, our emotional lives without the knock. The knock is a very important thing that I introduced to my own household, which changed you know things dramatically. Uh, they called me, what is this? We can't come but you have to put your foot down, right? And talking about the whole idea uh, where you said, you know, Indian kids don't really get to ex- experience what, it, what it's like to be naked and alone with their bodies, exploring someone else. For me, and for most of my friends who studied abroad, that happened abroad. I really realized what sex could be once I, you know, had sex with women from outside my race and with, with no foundations. There's no policeman standing outside to fucking arrest me. No, no parents, you know, sneaking into my sexual life. No friends. It's just the freedom to be naked with someone else. And you realize, and I'm not going to be But you know, it's not just that. It's also at home. Hmm. The moment you bring a girl over, they'll judge you. Yeah. Uh, and because our construction quality is so flimsy, you, you have to, whatever you do in your bedroom also has to be very, very quiet. So, I don't think people realize how unhealthy this is. Yeah. They just don't get it. And, you know, the problem then becomes that they start looking down on the left, for example, will start looking down on ancient customs, which were sort of purpose built to prevent this kind of thing. Such as? Such as, for example, uh, getting you married when you reached puberty, Mm. which is now seen as abusive child marriage. First of all, understand the uh, life expectancy in those days, five, six hundred years back, 
you're looking at between 36 to 42 years. Correct. Sometimes even yes. less, 32 in rural uh, households. So by the time you were 32, if you say you get married only when you're 18, 19, they'd laugh at you and say 18, 19 is when you become a bloody grandfather. Right? Two uh, 2024 that you get married at now is almost the end of your life in uh, mm. 400 years back. So, and nature's way of telling you you're ready and physiognomically, it's easiest for you to produce children when you're younger. Right. Because the human reproductive cycle, the childbirth uh, thing is one of the most invasive and destructive of, uh, it is the most invasive and destructive of any uh, 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 species around except the bulldog. Because English bulldogs can no longer give birth without C-sections. Hmm. That's because That's of artificial. Crazy. But remember, what has happened to the human head is also that. Because when we started walking straight, the size of the cranium grew up massively. So in a sense, we are almost uh, more... Uh, the bulldog is an unnatural experiment. The human brain is a natural sort of bulldog head experiment in that sense. Right. Because when you walk straight... You don't need to have the, the, there's no pressure on the back of your head. So the cranium can expand backwards and the brain becomes bigger and more complex. Uh, uh, I mean, that's a different discussion. I mean, talking about the evolution of the human brain, we, we need to set aside a whole hour for it because there's so much to talk about there. So what happens out here is that in India, you got them married off when they were about four or five so that, you know, they could be friends. Uh, in those days, you can't restrict brutality and things like that. Husband beating wife and ladita. So at least learn to be friends together. You're marrying your friend. It wasn't really a very effective thing, but whatever it could contain, that brutality within a marriage, it would. Right. Then when you achieve puberty, nature is telling you you're ready to go. Right. So if nature is telling you you're ready to go, boss, who the hell? I mean, what is the law that's telling you that you're not? So you, you were ready to go. By the time you were 9 or 13, depending between those ages, depending on if you would reached puberty or not, it would be consummated. You would produce kids. By the time you were about 24, 26, you'd be grandparents. Right. By the time you were 32, you would be cremated. 32 to 36, you would be cremated. Yeah. This is why the Shashti Abdapurti was such a big thing. Sorry, you're the deep, what? The Shashti? The Shashti Abdapurti, you're reaching your 60th year. Oh, okay. It was such a huge thing because nobody lived up to 60. Mm. So we, we had different ways of doing this. Shadi karalo. So the sexual exploration happens with your wife in tandem, right? Uh, in the family. Uh, and because your kids, the parents have to go out to the field in the morning. So you're staying at home. Yeah. You have time to explore these things. Yeah, I just read uh, Kamala Markandeya's Nectar and a Sieve, who's like considered to be one of the best post-independence India authors. And all the things you pointed out were just exactly as they are in the book. Married off at 16 to a man who's 28 or something, 24. The husband dies at the age of 49. And, uh, you know, she already, uh, actually, she's married at the age of 14. But she already has kids um, who become full-fledged, Patriarchs of their own family or matriarchs of their own families at the ages of 17, 18. So this was, you know, and, and um, you know, conflating this, blaming the system for the social violence that accompanied the system or the gender violence that accompanied the system is complete bullshit. Right. Because it wasn't this, this system came up to deal with the fact that you would die by the time you were 36. Right. It was actually trying to minimize, you see, a pre-industrial society, people don't realize a pre-industrial society cannot regulate social violence. Mm. So you can only try nuskas like this, nuskas as opposed to a doctor, dadima ke nuske kind of approaches. That's why Hakim's, yeah. To regulate it as best as you can. Mm. Right. So it's, it, it's, and then if you look at the left, they will attack all these systems. If you look at the right, they don't understand the social causes of why it was done or the anthropological causes of why it was done. It's like, mm -hmm. Sati, 
first of all you know if you read meenakshi jain's book on sati you realize it, that that the uh, atrocity literature around it is vastly exaggerated it was not the norm it was the exception it happened extremely rarely uh, uh and i really recommend you read meenakshi jain's book because it is the only book that has proper historical reference um hmm. uh, so number you're one. saying sati wasn't as prevailing as our history books pointed out it, it to be exactly right the second thing is it happened in two different parts of the country hmm. mostly one was in rajasthan the second was in bengal now rajasthan we all understand why it happened because rajasthan had that spirit of resistance unlike the rest of the country that just capitulated to the turks the muslims rajasthan never did so it was always every single sultan had to go besiege chitorgarh why because it didn't matter how many times they died they would come and raise up the flag of rebellion again mm-hmm. so mocking them for the fact that they kept losing but i think we should also appreciate them for the fact that it didn't matter that the entire city was massacred and taken as uh, uh, sl- they went even taken as slaves they were just massacred the entire katlea and they still repopulate and raise the rebellion all over again so it happened there for a reason because of the kind of brutality that these people brought in this you know uh, uh, pastoralist nomadic brutality that the, these people brought in where it came from number one. but why did it happen in bengal any idea because you had a the rest of the country was a property inheritance system called the mityakshara wherein the woman does not inherit property hmm. bengal it was called the daya bhaga daya ka bhag so the widow inherits Hmm. the sons wanted to kill off the mother so that they could divide her share now you tell me which son is going to kill off his mother an asshole uh, monster i would say so uh you did have asshole monsters who did it but mostly the and this is why everything so this is why in bengal remember where the woman can inherit property is also where the cult of the mother goddess is the highest i see interesting madurga madurga, madurga. so you you create this love for mother which then acts as the social restraint on you burning your mother alive hmm yeah What? there's so many psychological implications for that because you're basically maternalizing something else because you've abandoned your mother it couldn't go in one way or the other right. um uh then you look at the other great maternal culture which is uh, say the nayars in uh, kerala mm. or madurai in tamil nadu both have very different roots of their maternality so you know you had the uh, you also i mean we don't know much about uh, uh, their society at the time but the uh, satavahanas the emperors identified themselves by their mother not by their father gautami putra satakarni vasishti putra satakarni it was always the mother's name that would be taken first right then you had kerala where uh, you know the the queen wasn't called the rani she was called the raja hmm. right uh, the queen reigned it was the regnant queen and every time she found the king the king wasn't her husband because the king was meant to be a brahmachari because you can never tell who the father is you can always tell who the mother is Mm-hmm. so the king was meant to be a brahmachari uh and uh, the moment he became a threat the queen would say oh you know kali at artingal she loves you so he'd be sent off there uh, she wants you to become her husband and becoming the husband to kali meant you were sacrificed to kali so the moment you started threatening the queen you were sent off to artingal to be sacrificed to kali and what would happen is that the queen uh would have her husband and she It, it the the crown prince wasn't the king's son it was his sister the queen's son who would be the king so it was matrilinear i see and because the nayar men would be constantly doing war the women would manage, manage the finances so they had the financial power and therefore the matriarchy sort of matrilinearity automatically goes to the person making the money and therefore that power equation madurai is different because madurai the goddess is madurai meenakshi now i don't know what if what was the cause and what was the effect 
you gently find socially speaking women in madurai are much much stronger than they are in the rest of tamil nadu the men in madurai actually shit scared of the women because it's always been a sort of female centric deity worship out there hmm so you've had uh, uh as opposed to say assam which would be very patriarchal even though the mother goddess there is kamakya hmm. so you had these very very different ways of social um um uh, primitive social engineering you know mm-hmm. trying to find organic solutions without studying sociology as a science in that sense they yeah. try to come up with a lot of these solutions i think the problem is when they say caste system caste system caste system this they try to conflate a lot of things that aren't connected mm. i don't think they get it completely <coughs> and this is the problem of doing cut and paste i see well abhijit i've taken a solid two of two of your hours um <clears throat> wow um i don't have anything specific to add or summarize i will just say it's been a blast having you on in this podcast uh i think my mind is just doing rounds figuring out all the all the topics we covered but where can people find you twitter or uh they can email me which is abhijit@ipcs.org the last time i gave out my email i got like 500 emails I cannot go through all those emails guys I'm just sorry it's not that I I love interacting with my followers and people who write to me I physically cannot respond to 500 and you know you can eat at me you know I've got all my mentions now on mute because you know till I was about 10 12000 followers even up to 40000 followers I used to take an attempt to respond to everyone individually it's just a question of scale I just can't you're one man those yeah. things yeah yeah do you have any questions for me feedback anything like that me yeah, i'm just um hoping you enjoyed yourself because i enjoyed myself i, I thoroughly talking. enjoyed myself i have uh, never i always thought that it'd be interesting to speak to a blue number plate uh, you know bureaucrat uh the ones that i keep seeing in delhi and i thought you were one of those people but i'm surprised that you're not you're uh, far more and that that's a lesson in stereotypes itself um nonetheless i'm i'm glad because I, also what was interesting is i come from i think with this podcast and everything else i i i project a more sophisticated uh approach to communications than my family lineage would allow and you on the other hand have the exact opposite thing where you know you were basically raised in a family where culture and high art were the norm these things i've sort of had to learn on my own I mean, with some help from my family so it was interesting to see uh that you've spent all your life traveling uh, you know your formative years but i spent them concretely in india until i went to college so um that was interesting to compare paradigms and perspectives um and yeah thank you so much man any cost don't consider it uh, just before i go thank you because it yeah. is fun for me but don't consider it high art just because it's done in a sophisticated surrounding uh you know my dad always used to make fun of me uh, me going to the opera so often because he liked the opera i was addicted to the opera mm-hmm. he always used to make fun of me saying ki uh, and used to say this in hindi ye pata nahi kaisa pagal hai ja ke ye auraton ko sunta hai jiski mummy usse peet rahi hai aur wo chillati rehti hai so you know it's not necessarily high art it's just what you yeah. like i also like real trash like my favorite hindi movie is something called gunda which was so bad that it was good <laughs> the worst hindi movie ever made but i think it was the best hindi movie ever made there were lines like it from mera naam hai bulla main hamesha rakhta hu are woh uh ibbu hatela khayega kela woh wali picture ka na it's it's that medley of dialogues with all these guys it was a shock it was so bad that it was brilliant ya kali koi mere ko ye wala dialogue bol raha tha hum we were we had gone to rock climbing aur koi kehta khayega kela and then there was a joke about that so yeah. uh, you know it's it's just different yeah, yeah yeah for better or worse it is seen as refined um it may it may not be it could i mean it could all i mean there are some people who genuinely do it because it's pretentious mm which is the worst like i know you i know you don't enjoy jazz stop pretending you do yeah exactly 
like there are lots of jazz that i don't like there are lots of operas that i don't like and when you know the pretentious shits come and tell me it's a great opera i'll tell them i'm sorry it's shitty bloody music it's shitty bloody singing it's a uh-huh. fucking bore i'd much rather be crocheting my pubic hair than listening to that opera they get really upset because you don't talk you don't talk that way it's like uh, you know uh, it's uh, breaking the shibboleths yeah yeah it's i also say think the same thing about mirzapur people who haven't lived in up shouldn't comment on mirzapur realism because they haven't watched jack shit i've seen i've seen a fucking bunch of like weird ass encounters and like you know like bhaiya culture in up i know exactly what is happening tum ye kaise bol sakte ho ki ye mirzapur oh my god it's cinematic is um it's a nice genre to have for mirzapur um yeah like the series mirzapur yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's interesting so it uh, i i think look at it more from a pop culture point of view than a reflection of genuine culture but mm. remember I mean, after you watch gangs of wasipur you realize mirzapur is just a very long version of gangs of wasipur that's exactly what i said uh, yeah it's but, also for for the urban dweller to take a taste of what the hinterland looks like exactly exactly yeah yeah fantastic abhi thank you so much for doing this thank bro this was fun thank you Ciao. thank you hope to see you around these uh times har har mahadev हर हर महादेव सॉटेड